All right, so day four, um, number 34, given the first term and the common difference, find the first five terms. So it's supposed to be really easy because I gave you the first term and I told you how much they change by. So first five terms, I'm going to make five lines, okay? And then I'm going to fill them in. So I know the first one is three. And uh, since I have a value of D, not R, remember D means you add or subtract. R means you multiply, okay? So that means I'm gonna be adding two because the positive two, so three plus two, that's five, plus two is seven, plus two is nine, plus two is 11, and I'm done, okay? So um, that's, uh, that's all you have to do for number 34, it's pretty easy. Just fill them in and, and that's it, okay? Pretty, pretty basic stuff, nothing too difficult. Um, so that's number 34, okay? Number 35 says, find the missing terms of this arithmetic sequence. Now, this one's a little different. Uh -huh. When did you say uh, When you have a, a ratio, an R value. We'll get to those near the end, I think. Uh, but those are called geometric sequences, so those multiply. So you got a common ratio. Um, the D value is a common difference, meaning like you add or subtract the same amount every time. Um, so for number 35, uh, finding the missing terms, it comes in two steps, okay? So step one, anybody remember what the first step was? <laughs> yeah, you're going to subtract the, the term on the right, negative 70, minus the term on the left, okay? Notice I did use parentheses on purpose because minus a negative makes it a plus, right? So this is negative 70 plus 20, that's negative 50, okay? Then step two. We're trying to find our common difference. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna get the answer that we just got and we're gonna divide by the number of steps it takes to get from negative 20 to negative 70. So let's count it, let's see. One, two, three, four, five steps. So I'm gonna divide it by five. <coughs> so that means that the common difference is negative 10. Okay, so my D value is negative 10. That means I'm gonna to go to negative 20, subtract 10, that's negative 30, subtract 10, negative 40, subtract 10, that's negative 50, subtract 10, that's negative 60, and then subtract 10 again, just to make sure I got it right, and I do end up at negative 70. Always keep going to the last number because if you don't hit the right number, that means your subtraction is wrong or addition, whatever it happens to be. So this is done in two steps. First step is you, you basically, you find your range, right? From, you subtract the big number minus the small number, or in our case, the small number minus the big because they are negatives. Um, but you're gonna subtract like right minus left. That's gonna give you your range. Then you're gonna divide by the number of steps it takes to get to that last number. And uh, that should give you your D value. If it comes out to a fraction, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It could be that it's a fraction. But a lot of times they're whole numbers. Or not, let me rephrase that, integers, not whole numbers. Because negative 10 is not a whole number, that's an integer. Whole numbers are numbers from zero and up. So positive numbers. Um, are we okay with this one? So remember these steps, okay? If this is something, I know when we took this quiz, a lot of people forgot the first, the two steps, okay? Make sure you write those down if you don't remember. That way you won't miss this. Because this is easy. This is easy to do. But if you don't remember how to do it, then uh, it could be difficult. I mean, could you have guessed minus 10? Maybe you're thinking like, well, I'll try subtracting and let's see what we can get. Right? Maybe you could guess it. But in, instead of guessing, try to find it out exactly. All right. So this says find the explicit formula of the arithmetic sequence. So to do that, you're going to need to know what the explicit formula is. So that's going to be a sub n equals to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay? So they just want the explicit formula. So I'm going to fill it in with uh, whatever they gave me. They gave me a sub 1. They gave me the d value. So uh, I'm just going to write the following. A sub n is equal to 10 plus n minus 1 times 4. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that and uh, find my actual solution. So I'm going to distribute this right here. So that's 10 
plus 4n minus 4. So that's 4n plus 6. This is my explicit formula. That means that I can get any, any value from this sequence using that formula. Just tell me which term you want. If you want the 10th term, well, 4 times 10 is 40 plus 6. So the 10th term would be 46. Okay. Um, first term, plug in a 1. Four, 4 times 1 is 4 plus 6 is 10, just like you told me, right? A sub 1 is 10. <coughs> so you can find any term you want based on that. Now, this could also be the explicit formula okay if they don't want you to simplify it you can just put put it the way it is right there before the distribution and that should be fine too but a lot of times they want you to simplify it okay so just pay attention to the options that you're given and see how much work you have to do but that's the formula you need to know right there in green uh, so make sure you guys write that down somewhere um, again call it explicit formula of an arithmetic <coughs> sequence okay and that's what that is there's one for geometric okay so we'll get to that soon okay this one says find the sum of the arithmetic series now the way you're going to do that is uh, a formula s sub n is equal to n over whoops n over 2 a sub 1 plus a sub n now, in order to use that formula, I got to figure out all those values. Okay, so what is n? Okay, so to find n, anybody remember how to do that? <coughs> Sorry. B minus a plus one, right? B minus a plus one oops let's see plus one b is the top number on the sigma and a is the bottom number on the sigma sigma okay so this is going to be 10 minus 1 plus 1 which happens to be 10 so i know that n is 10. now i think i remember sharing with you guys a little shortcut if the number on the bottom is a 1 then n is just the top number so if it was from 1 to 200, then n is 200. If it's from 1 to 39, n is 39. Okay? But when the bottom number changes, then that can be different. So we know n is 10. Now, i got to find a sub 1. The way I find a sub 1 is I plug in the bottom number, so it's 1, into the equation. 6 times 1 minus 3, that's just 6 minus 3, so that's 3. a sub 1 is 3. Okay, I'll put little circles around it that way. We know those are things that are answers. And now I gotta find the last term, a sub n. To find a sub n, I'm gonna plug in the top number, the 10. 6 times 10 minus 3. That's 60 minus 3, so that's 57. And there you go. I know what n is. I know a sub 1. I know a sub n. I just plug it into the formula, and I solve. So here we go. S sub n, which would be 10, is equal to 10 over 2 times 3 plus 57. That's 5 times 60. So that's 300. So, I mean, doing the formula is pretty basic. It's not that hard. The hard part is figuring out all the little pieces, right? And not that that's difficult, but you have to know how to do it, right? You got to know how do I find first term? How do I find last term? How do I find n? Right? And once you find those pieces, then you just plug it in. And, of course, your calculator can help you do this stuff, so you don't need to do it by hand like I'm doing it. But um, they, this is how you would do this problem. So you need the formula. You need to find the pieces for the formula, and then you're going to plug it all in. To get your answer. Questions on this one? All right. 38. Find the sum of this arithmetic series. So same question as before, but the main difference is notice the bottom number. It's a 4, not a 1. So if you tell me n is 12, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. n is 9. Okay. Um, so 
We already know the formula, right? Uh, I'll write it down again just in case. S sub n is equal to n over 2, a sub 1 plus a sub n. So let's find our pieces here. So n would be b minus a plus 1. b is 12 minus 4 plus 1. Well, 12 minus 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So n is 9. Okay. Now to find a sub 1, I plug in the bottom number into the equation. The bottom number is a 4. This will be 2 times 4 minus 3. That's 8 minus 3, so that's 5. That's my first term, it's 5. And then i got to find a sub n, my last term. So that's plugging in the top number. So 2 times 12 minus 3, that's 24 minus 3, so that's 21. So that's the hard part, finding all the pieces. And then once you have all that stuff, then you can, uh, you can put them into the formula. So, S sub n, that'd be S sub 9, is equal to 9 over 2 times A sub 1, 5, plus a sub n, 21. So it's 9 over 2 times 26. I know I can't divide 9 by 2, but I can divide 26 by 2. That's 13. So 9 times 13. Uh, and then multiply. So 9 times 3, that's 27. Um, so the 2 goes over, so that's going to be 117. Let me double check that 9 to 11. Yeah. That should be one seven. <coughs> Again, these aren't hard problems, but you do have to know the process. If you know the process, the problems are pretty easy. Okay? But that's a lot of process, right? That's a lot of stuff that we had to go through in order to do this problem. So, again, that's the, the use of uh, having a, a little cheat sheet with you, right? Um, I would recommend writing down a problem like 37 and 38 just so you have guidance for both. Okay? Um, but, I mean, I would, just so I can see, like, oh, n isn't always a top number. It can be something different, right? Questions on this one? All right. So 39, determine the number of terms in the arithmetic series. Now, a lot of people struggled with this problem. Uh, I remember on the quiz, like, most people did just fine. And then when it came to this, that's where, like, a lot of people did okay, and some people did not know how to do it. Um, so let me remind you guys how you're supposed to do it. You're going to take your formula, S sub n equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. And then you're going to plug in everything that you were given. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine the number of terms, the n value. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What's n? Notice they didn't give me an n value. They gave me an a sub 1, an a sub n, an s sub n. So what I'm going to do is plug everything in. This is 150 equals to n over 2. a sub 1 is 10. a sub n is 50. Once I plug everything in, it's kind of obvious I'm solving for n, right? Um, so 10 plus 50, that's 60. It's 150 <coughs> equals to n over 2 times 60. 60 divided by 2 is 30, so that's 150 equals to 30n. And if I divide both sides by 30, n must be 5. I mean, this is pretty simple, but a lot of people forgot how to do it. So maybe it's because if you would have had an example, it would have helped you fit, like actually do it, right? Um, but I know I don't let you guys use notes during the school year. So... Um, so maybe if you had it, you would have been just fine. So now you can write that down to help yourself out. And just so you know, many years back, I used to let people use notes all the time. Um, started realizing that people were learning less and less, even though they were doing better and better on the test. Uh, but final exams and stuff, like people would start tanking because they couldn't write that many, that many notes. Um, so we were talking about it in our math department, and we're like, do you think it's because the kids aren't memorizing stuff anymore, and like they, they rely on, on everything? Um, you know, and, I mean, it was kind of, that kind of happened, because we started noticing the less notes we use, the better kids remember, right? 
So, uh, so yeah, about about ten years ago, you guys would have been able to use your whole year's notes on the final exam. We also noticed the kids were taking extra long taking tests. That's because they were too busy looking for notes, right? Um, so, yeah, we tried it. Um, it was good in terms of grades. The problem is when you guys got to like say trig, if you were going to trig. Uh, a lot of people didn't remember how to do any of the previous work uh, because they didn't ever memorize them. So. so, yeah, sorry that you can't use all your notes, but at least we're giving you two pages now. Uh, hold on, let me move this out of the way. All right, so notice the terminology. Find the common ratio, not the common difference. This is R. Since that means it's R, and they said, and the explicit formula, that means I got to use the explicit formula for a geometric sequence. So that looks like this. That is my explicit formula. A sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So in order to fill that in, I need to know what a sub 1 is, and I need to know what r is. Now remember, the way we find out r is through division. Okay? Or, I mean, some people will say 3 times what is 6? Well, 2. 6 times what is 12? 2, and two, uh, 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. That means R is 2, right? <laughs> but the numbers aren't always that easy to tell, so if you're ever struggling, this is how you do. You divide this way. 6 divided by 3, 12 divided by 6, 24 divided by 12, 48 divided by 24. It's always 2, right? So R is 2. So if you can't figure it out going forward, then you divide the next term by the previous, the next by the previous. Don't jump 48 divided by 3. Don't do that. It's always the ones that are next to each other. Okay? And then a sub 1 should be obvious. That's 3. Okay? So now that I know that um, my r is 2 and my a sub 1 is 3, I just got to plug it into the formula. So a sub n is equal to 3 times r to the n minus 1. And that's it. So it's pretty easy, not too hard to do. The hardest part is going to be your R value. Just remember, uh, you are multiplying to get to the next number. So if you can do that in your head, like if you can see it, then don't worry about dividing. But if you're not sure, then divide it out. And remember, guys, don't just divide like the first two, like six and three, and say, oh, that's two. R is two. You got to check all of them because if they don't all come out to two, that means that this is not a geometric sequence. And that could be like a trick question that they're trying to ask. You. So, um, but, so if you see like multiple choice tests, then it's like R is three, R is six, R is eight, and D says not a geometric sequence. If I were you, I'd test every number because in that case, maybe that's the option that they, they're trying to trick you. Okay. Any questions before we move on? Because we got a 41, 42, 43, and 44, and then we're done. And they're all basically all sequences, so we're kind of staying on the same topic. All right. <coughs> evaluate this geometric series. So evaluate basically means find the sum. Okay? So the way you find the sum uh, for a geometric series is S sub n equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus r. And for this, you're going to need, most likely, a calculator. So we have one right here. Because r to the n can become a really big number. I don't know what the r is, but we'll figure it out right now. Um, what is r here? Three, Three right? Uh, I know my a sub 1 is 2. My R is 3, just because 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18, 18 times 3 is 54. Or you can divide them, okay? Um, what else do I need? N is 7, they told me, right? N is 7. They gave that to me right here. So I have everything I need, so let me plug it in. S sub 7 is equal to 2 times 1 minus 3 to the 7 over 1 minus 3, which would be S sub 7 equal to 2 times. Um, let me see what 1 minus 3 to the 7th would be. That's negative 2,186 divided by negative 2. 
uh, those will cancel. So it's just 2,186. By the way, I didn't cancel the negative 2 with the 2. I just canceled the 2. The negative remained on the bottom, but since the top number is negative and the bottom number is negative, that becomes positive, right? <coughs> so it's just 2,186. So this would be your answer. Again, not, not that this is hard to do. It's just you got to know what to do, right? Like, what do I need? What's the formula? What parts do I need? I can find everything's there. It's not a secret. It's all there. You just got to find it. Okay? So that's 41. Moving on to 42. Evaluate this geometric series. We're going to do the same thing that we just did. It just looks different. Right? It just looks different, but we're going to kind of treat it the way we did the last problem that, that looked kind of like this. We know that um, S sub n is equal to A sub 1, 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. Okay? So I just got to figure out all the pieces. So, what's n? Say again? Not one. How many terms? <coughs> Remember, if the bottom number... Oh, I, I see why you called it one. I see why you called it one. You called it one because it says n equals one. I got you. I got you. Um, so maybe I, let me do this. Let me do this. Just to not have you confused. I'll just change the letter. Okay, I, I, I'm like, why did they pick one? But I just saw it says n equals one. So yes, you guys were right. n equals one based on this thing. But, but the number of terms is what I'm asking. It would be eight, okay? Because since the bottom number is a one, so remember, you could just choose the top number in that case. Now, if you don't want to do that, remember, it's b minus a plus one, which would be eight minus one plus one, which is eight, okay? Um, so sorry about that mix up there. I didn't even think about the fact that the, the n value is there. Um, a sub 1. What's a sub 1? Now, focus here. It's 3. And what's r? It's 2. Right? Because a, a 3 times 2 to the i minus 1 is basically the explicit formula telling you a sub 1 is 3, r is 2. Okay? So I'm just going to plug that into my uh, equation. So S sub 8 is equal to A sub 1 is 3 times 1 minus 2 to the 8th over 1 minus 2. So that's 3, um, 2 to the 8th, the 5th is 32, the 6th is 64, the 7th is 128, so that's 256. So negative 255 over negative 1. So what's 3 times 255? Uh, 765. There you go. So finding A1 and R, and these is a little bit easier because they're giving you the explicit formula. So you just find them in there. Okay, You don't have to like calculate them like we did with the arithmetic ones, right? Plugging in numbers and figuring out what happened. Uh, here they're given to you. All right, two more. Important word here. Whoops. Infinite geometric series. Okay. That means the formula is different. It's easier. But there's one little catch. Okay. The absolute value of r has to be less than 1. The only way you can use this formula, if the absolute value of r is not less than 1, then there is no sum. Okay? But if it is less than 1, then there is a sum and we can figure it out. So, let's find our pieces. What's a sub 1? That's 100. That was pretty easy right in the beginning. What's r? So looks right, yeah, because 100 times half is 50. 50 times half is 25. 50, uh, 25 times half is 25 over 2. Again, you can do this on your calculator. 
25 over 2 divided by 25 is half. 25 divided by 50 is half. 50 divided by 100 is half. So the, the R value is half. And this absolute value of half is less than 1. Okay? So I'll just put it right here. Absolute value of half is less than 1. Okay? That checks out. That means I can use the formula. So here we go. S is equal to a sub 1 over 1 minus half. Well, 1 minus half is half, and 100 divided by half is 200. So your answer is 200. <coughs> so if r would have been like 3, then the absolute value of 3 is not less than 1, then I would write no sum. Okay, no, nothing to do anymore. Just write no sum, and that's it. And add whatever you want. So here we go. Last one, and then if you guys want, tonight, 45 to 55. Okay? And please start reviewing the ones before. Again, if you're a senior, you have nothing to worry about. Just make sure you're here tomorrow to, uh, not tomorrow, sorry, Tuesday to finish off the rest of the paperwork. And then return it in, and you're good. Okay. The rest of you guys, you guys can keep the paper and use it to study. But the seniors won't need it for anything. So, all right, notice it says infinite sum. So again, I'm using the formula S equals to A sub 1 over 1 minus R, where R has to be, well, the absolute value of R has to be less than 1. Is the absolute value of R less than 1? No. No. <coughs> no sum. Okay, you're supposed to be using this formula the one that we just wrote earlier. A sub 1 is 2, we know that. And R is 3. Now you might say, I don't understand why it doesn't sum up. Okay? Um, because if I put it into the formula, 2 over 1 minus 3 is just negative 1. I get an answer. Why doesn't it work? Uh, the reason why it doesn't work is because, remember, you're multiplying by 3. Well, think about it this way. In order for a geometric sum to exist, it has to eventually get to a certain point like, it has to keep approaching a certain number, like approaching 2, approaching 10. If I just keep multiplying by 3, am I ever going to stop? Am I ever, am I ever going to slow down? No, no. no, I'm always just going to be 3 times bigger. So the numbers are just going to keep, keep getting 3 times bigger every time. It's never going to slow down. We need it to slow down. Okay? So um, that's why there's no sum when the R value is too big. It has to be less than 1. So I'll stop right there.